Hi, this is Gary Rosenzweig with Flash Game University, FlashGameU.com, and today I'm going to take a look at a uh, question that somebody sent me. They wanted to know how to basically create and then remove objects from the screen. Um, so I do this all the time, and uh, they wanted me to kind of review it. So I had created a movie where I created a bunch of circles on the screen and removed them all sometime later. But this kind of looked like a particle system to me, so I thought, let me combine this with a particle system tutorial. So to save some time, I've already created the code here, and I'm going to show you uh, how it works. Um, so I've created a movie called Particle System Test. In this movie, uh, it's completely blank except for that there is a particle movie clip. Particle movie clip is just a fuzzy dot. So the particle movie clip is already set so that it is export for action script with class name particle. So now we can access it and create new ones. Um, and that's it. That's all that's in there except in the timeline we're actually going to go ahead and create a variable called ps and particle system type. Particle system is what we're going to be creating here. So it's particle system type and it's new particle system. And we're passing three variables into it. And we'll look at what those three variables mean. Remember it's this, 275, and 300. So the name particle system is something arbitrary that we created and it ties into this particle system.as that we created. So that name has to match this name. And this also has the name defined as the class name and as the constructor function. So what does particle system do? Well, particle system is going to create a whole bunch of these fuzzy little dots, move them around, and destroy them on a regular basis. So let's take a look here. Particle system constructor function takes a movie clip as its first parameter, which we're passing, remember, this into it. So in other words, it's going to be the root movie clip. And we're going to store that temporarily in root movie. Then we're also going to go ahead and take these two, those two numbers and store them in loc x and loc y. Very quickly, we're going to go ahead and store these more permanently. Start X and start Y are going to hold loc X and loc Y. And we can see that is actually a property of this class. So we'll have that for future use. Uh, root movie, we're not going to actually go ahead and store. We're just going to use it once here. What we're going to do is we're going to create a new sprite. A sprite just like a movie clip, so it doesn't have a timeline. We don't need a timeline for this. So um, we're going to create a particle movie clip, particle MC, which is declared as a property of the class. And we're going to go ahead and create it as a new sprite and then we're going to add it to the root movie. So we've actually placed this now on the screen where we can see it. There's nothing in it yet, but it's there. We're going to set an event listener to call move particles every frame. And that move particles is what's going to do all the heavy lifting. We're also going to go ahead and create an array here of particles. Empty array right now. But that's also a property, so we'll be using that uh, throughout. Great. So First thing that happens here is we're going to call move particles on the first frame. And it's going to call something called create particle. Let's jump right to that and see how you create a particle. All we're doing here is creating a new version of particle. We're creating P is particle, it's a new particle. Great. So we've created that little movie clip that's in the library. We're going to now have a copy of that that we can do something with. We're going to set the X and Y to the start X and Y. Makes sense. Now we're going to create three dynamic variables. You can do that with movie clips. Movie clips are dynamic classes so you can go ahead and add your own variables to them. So we're going to create one called life and set it to 100. That's how long the particle is going to live. Then we're going to create dx and dy. This is how much the particle is going to move each frame. So it's going to move up a little bit and it's going to go ahead and move to the left or right a little bit. Math random uh, is a number between 0 and 1. Multiply by 2 which is between 0 and 2. Subtract 1 and we get a random number between negative 1 and 1. So a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right. We're going to add that single particle to the particle movie clip. Remember, particle MC is on the screen right now. So now this particle is visible in party, particle MC. Particle MC is visible on the stage. So now we actually see this particle. We're also going to send it to the array. Save it in the array so we have a record of it. This is the important part for actually creating and removing objects from the screen is to remember them. If you create them and you just don't have any way to know where, where they are, then it's very hard to delete them. But if you save it in an array, like here's going to be an array of particles, now we can remove them and we can also go ahead and do things with them. So great, we've created a particle. Now we're going to loop through the particles backwards. Important to go backwards because we're going to be removing these as they get old. And if we go forwards through it, we'll be skipping them as we remove them. So we're going to go ahead and start with the end of the array, go to the beginning, moving backwards. And we're going to move each particle, the x amount and the y amount, it's set. So a little bit to the left or right, and then up. We're going to go ahead and subtract 1 right here from the life of the particle and check to see if it's 0. If it is 0, we're going to use remove child to remove that particle.
from the particle MC, which effectively removes it from the stage as well. Then the only record of the particle is in the array. We use splice to remove it from the array. We remove position I1 from the array. Now we remove the reference to that particle and we have removed it from the display list, meaning that it's gone. There's no more record of it. We don't have a record of it. The display list doesn't, so it's thrown away. And if we run, we'll see what happens. And there we go. Particles are created from that point. Some go left, some go right, and they all move consistently up. And they're destroyed when they reach here because they all have a life of about 100. You can go ahead and play with the formula here. You can see it can go a little bit faster here. Great. So now all we need to do is uh, go ahead and uh, call this whenever we want to create a particle system at a different location. Another thing we can do here is go ahead and um, uh, create a deconstructor function if we like, which would actually remove the particle MC from the root movie. So we might want to save, in that case, root movie in some sort of property and then remove particle MC from it. Also at the same time going through the array, just like we are here, Except instead of, oops, excuse me, instead of actually going ahead and getting rid of it only if the life is less than zero, then we get rid of every single one. So that will be how to deconstruct the entire thing. So you can find the complete source code at flashgameu.com. You can also find the high resolution video at flashgameu.com. Uh, and that's it. Thank you. This has been Gary Rosenzweig with flashgameu.com.